Okay, this is Dr. Corey Glenn, and I'm going to demonstrate another uh, technique that I use with Photoshop. And this one applies more to when you're trying to do a, a larger simulation where you want to maybe do a full mouth rehabilitation or, or give the person a really big picture view of what you could accomplish if you treated a lot of teeth. Um, so here we have a patient that's got some crowns that um, he's not happy with the shade of them. There's some darkness on the, the teeth behind that. And so this is not really a case where it's conducive to, to just altering individual teeth. We're going to want to cut out all the, the teeth in his smile and try to replace them with something different. And so what we'll do is we've opened this picture. And when you do this, I would suggest doing the full face for confidentiality purposes. I'm not showing the entire face, but um, you would want to do that with your, your smile simulation because the patient can see it in their actual face and uh, relate to the picture a lot better. But what I've done is I've opened the patient's picture up. Anytime we do anything in Photoshop as far as smile simulation, we're going to go ahead and duplicate the layer. And as you can see down here on the bottom right, if you just go in and click on um, the picture, you can say duplicate layer and you can always have a backup. You always want to have that backup there so that if things go haywire, uh, you don't like a change that you've done, you've always got something to get back to where you started from. Now the next thing that is important with this technique is you're going to need a library of teeth pictures that you can sample from. So in this case you can see I've got a picture of a really nice retracted smile. Um, the reason you want to do this is because we're going to be cutting out this entire smile and inserting it into our patient's face. Now we can resize it and everything to make it fit a little better, but it's nice to have a large library of these. You might need to have some where where they have a deep bite, um, where they've got wide teeth, where they've got a narrow arch. Um, you, you would like to have a lot of different uh, variety of, of smiles that you could use for your pe particular patient because you don't go want to go put a really wide Julia Roberts type smile into someone with a really narrow arch. And so the way I've built this is just as patients come in, if they've got a nice looking smile or if it would fit you know, my library needs, I'll just take a quick retracted picture of them and you can build a library so that you can do these. So what I'm gonna do here is we've highlighted this. We're gonna use this, um, or the, uh, what is this called? The rectangular marquee tool. And we're gonna highlight all this. And then we're going to come up here and copy it. Now we'll go back into our other one. And I'm going to just click right in the middle here. And I'm going to say edit and paste. And as you can see, it's created a new layer, as you can see down here in the on the bottom right. And uh, we just want to get it relatively close in there. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to sandwich this layer in between your two copies. And that'll be clear why I'm doing that in just a moment. Now one of the things you'll notice on my copy, I've already gone ahead and done this, but I've cut out his entire smile. The tool you would use to do that would be this uh, lasso tool and you'll want to do the polygon lasso. The way this tool works is you're just going to go around clicking and you would just follow around within the patient's lips and once it gets highlighted like that you would come up here and say um, cut. Now in his case for the sake of time I've already done that so I won't um, go through that but it's a very simple thing to do. Get rid of that. Okay so if we look at our layers here on the bottom right we've got three layers currently. We've got on the very bottom the patient's original picture. In the middle we've got the teeth that we just cut out from our, our idealized smile and then on the top you're going to have the patient's uh, mouth cut out. If I turn off the other ladies you can see here. And so hopefully you get the idea is that we're going to sandwich in between these two layers the idealized teeth so that we can see what they would look like. So we're going to turn all of our layers on where they're visible and we're going to highlight the layer that has the actual um, simulated teeth. Come to edit, free transform, 
and that's going to allow us to move this around and as you can see here I'm moving this around within the smile what I'd like to do is get the uh, incisal edges roughly following the the lip line and you can see that already looks really nice if you were just trying to do a simulation to start the conversation about cosmetics this may be all you need to do personally I like to get it a little closer um, so let me show you how I would do that if we come up here and turn the opacity down 65 50 percent or so that would be fine now we can zoom in Maybe not quite that far and we can actually see the ghost image of the patient's original teeth underneath the uh, simulated layer that we've gotten here so we're still in free transform mode the first thing I'll do is I'll start moving this image around until I line up the um, the embrasures between the centrals I want to get that centered right there and if you can see in this ghost image the patient's original tooth is about this width whereas my simulation is a lot wider and so I can tell right off the bat I need to start skewing this down um, to try and get it to match up a little more realistic you know the reason I want to do this is because there's no point in in showing your patient a simulation that you can't even remotely come close to matching in their own mouth and so I like to try and get the teeth lined up roughly similar to what their um, current teeth are. Again, we're resizing. I'm going to get the centrals um, where they're about the right width. I feel like that's always the easiest thing to do. We're going to keep narrowing this. And I'll always come back and match up the, the uh, embrasure right between the centrals. And as you can see now we're getting really close this central matches up exactly this one is still a little bit wide so I'm going to bring it in slightly narrower and now you can see we're getting really close I may have overdone it so I'm going to widen it back out the reason I'm saying that is because if you look at the canine here um, the patient's canine on the bottom layer looks a little wider and so this won't be exact but we're pretty close now and so again I'm gonna line this up where um, the teeth should ideally follow the lower lip line just like you would go for in, in a standard aesthetic smile design um, you don't have to line this up perfectly but you want to get pretty close as far as the tooth alignment and so that looks good so let's turn our opacity back up to hundred percent and what you'll be able to see and you will have to apply the free transform that you just did what we'll be able to see now is our patient with a simulated smile um, in the mouth now it's not perfect and I'll show you a few tweaks that we can make to it um, but if I just turn the layer off, now we can toggle back and forth between what you can see uh, was his original smile versus our simulation. Now, a few things that jump out at me, if you focus on the, the first molar region on both sides, our simulation is a bit narrower of an arch. Um, again, if you're just trying to start the conversation, that may not be critical. But if you're wanting to use this for lab communication and for truly designing the smile before you start wax ups, um, that might be important to fix. And so let's zoom back in and make a few of those changes. We'll get this centered in the mouth. You know, one other thing that I'm noticing is that it might be a little bit canted. And so again, I'm going to highlight the layer that we're working on, free transform, and it looks to me like this needs to get rotated a little bit. So if you just grab up here around the corner and get this curved arrows, you can rotate this however you need to do it. If it's helpful, again, come back and turn your opacity down so that you can get things lined up a little bit better. So that looks good there. that now again this looks narrower and you can actually see the patient's um, first molar out on this side so 
one of the ways I'll modify that is I'm going to come in and get the uh, rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to just highlight the first molar and then we're going to right click free transform that selection now I can widen out that first molar in our simulation if I want to bring it down I can do that as well we'll apply it now I'm going to come over and do the exact same thing with this first molar I'm just going to grab it with the marquee tool right click free transform and I can widen that out and fill in the buckle corridor so we're looking much better on our width now the only thing that I'm not liking is um, how this looks a little rough and it's obviously been altered so now we've got our simulation more or less done um, I'd like to clean this up a little bit more but one thing I'll do before I start making some of those fine tuning adjustments is I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna merge these layers down so our layer uh, of the smile simulation and the cutout mouth copy I'm gonna merge those two together because now that's gonna allow me to make changes and not worry about which which layer am I working on now it's the same layer um, so to clean this up you know you could either use the clone stamp tool or I'm gonna start out by just using the blur tool and I'm gonna blur in some of this uh, you might have to adjust the brush hardness to make it a little bit more aggressive. We'll blur that a bit. We'll blur in here some. And you know, it really depends on how fancy you want to get with this. If I want to use the clone stamp tool, where this looks like it's not so clean we could uh, press alt and then right or left click with what's in the crosshairs and that's going to make this a little sampler a color sampler all right and we can come back and blur that again So I'm not going to go overboard with this. Remember, we're really zoomed in, and we're talking about the minutia at this point. The patient's really concerned with what, what their teeth are going to look like in their smile. And so let's zoom back out and see how we're doing. Um, and you can see the, the things that I was worried about there, they're really not visible very much. But now we can start um, toggling back and forth, and you can really show the patient in real time um, exactly what what kind of a difference you can make for them with cosmetic work uh, be it veneers, crowns, whitening, whatever you decide you want to do and so we've got a very nice smile simulation just took a few minutes to accomplish and uh, the more you do this the quicker it gets it really really can be done in about five minutes if you've got a good library of teeth to put in and uh, have just done the process enough that you're comfortable moving through the software so hope that was helpful. Um, hopefully we'll have more videos coming out soon.